NASA engineers can now communicate with Voyager 1 for the first time in five months. Get this, the spacecraft is 15 billion miles away from the Earth, beyond our solar system. It suffered a communication glitch that meant no information could be sent back to NASA during this time. Research scientist and engineer Bill Kurth is with the Voyager Plasma Wave Investigation Team and the Radio and Plasma Wave Research Group at the University of Iowa. And Dr. Kurth joins us from Iowa City. So good of you to join us. Now, NASA was able to track the problem to a corrupted chip responsible for storing parts of the computer's memory. Rebooting didn't work. They tried that. But they were able to fix the chip. That's just absolutely amazing. Actually, they, they did not fix the chip. But what they've done is they've found a way to um, rearrange the program and the memory so that it doesn't use the, the portion of the memory that's not working. It's amazing that that's done because you sit there and think, you know, we have computer problems in our house. And this is a, 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 a piece of machinery that's 15 billion miles away. Worse yet, it's 22 and a half hours away, one way light time, which means if you were trying to type a email into your desktop computer and you misspelled a word and you wanted to go back and correct it, it would take two days to find out if you properly corrected it. And Voyager's message back to NASA was pretty simple. It said, hi, it's me, V1. Uh, over the weekend, it was more than that. Uh, we actually got a um, engineering mode working on the spacecraft, which basically reports on the status of the various subsystems of the spacecraft and the instruments. So what are we still learning from Voyager 1? Uh, Voyager, uh, both Voyagers are still carrying out extremely exciting science. Uh, the University of Iowa instrument is measuring the spectrum of plasma waves in space, and from that spectrum, we can determine the density of electrons uh, beyond the, the heliosphere, beyond the sun's atmosphere. And uh, for example, we're measuring a density of about 0.15 per cubic centimeter, which means we see one electron in the volume of, a, say, a golf ball. And uh, that's the first in situ measurement of the density outside the sun's uh, sphere of influence that uh, has ever been made. And we found as we moved farther out into the interstellar medium, we found that the density increased slowly and more recently it's kind of flattened out. So we're interested in knowing whether we're in a new regime or whether this is just uh, an extension of the uh, interstellar medium as we get farther from the, the sun. Being able to reconnect with Voyager 1, does this mean that there's a whole lot of life left to that spacecraft? We certainly hope so. <clears throat> Unless something else happens, we expect that at least one of the Voyagers will be able to celebrate its 50th anniversary. Amazing. That would be in uh, late summer of 2027. And there's no reason to believe they couldn't go a few years longer. We certainly hope so. Research scientist and engineer William Kurth from the University of Iowa. Exciting news from deep space. Dr. Kurth, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.